Hi everyone, myself Navya Tharavi, working as assistant professor in the Department of Cyber Security and Data Science in MLR Institute of Technology. Today, I am going to discuss about the topic isolation and its levels and testing for serializability. The overview of my presentation includes what is isolation and levels of isolation and testing for serializability. As isolation is one of the properties in ACID properties, so it is the core ACID properties of a database transaction ensuring that the operations of one transaction remains hidden from other transaction until completion. So that is why here ACID, I have uh, represented it with a red color. So what is the acronym of ACID? A for atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. Now we are dealing with the isolation property. So it will not allow the other transactions to read or write, to read or update the data until it has been permit, it has been, it will permit, right? Till now we have discussed about the transactions, for example, T1 and T2. So here R of A, W of A, these are the two operations. So these will be isolated till it has been committed. That means it will be locked. So it will not allow T2 to read or write this data. That is what we call as isolation. Right. So, it means that no two transactions should interfere with each other and affect the other's intermediate state. So, it will T2 will not, must not interfere T1. So, what is the phenomena defining isolation levels includes? So, what is the phenomena behind that, this isolation? So, we have dirty read, which have already dealt in our previous sessions. Reading the data before committing. One transaction tries to read the data from other transaction before committing. That read is called as dirty read. So, a dirty read is the situation when a transaction reads the data that has not yet been committed. That is what about dirty read. Next, let us discuss about non-repeatable read. So, what is non-repeatable read? When a transaction reads the same row twice and gets a different value each time. And gets a different value each time. That is nothing but ambiguity. So, if I am performing the same operation, I am getting the result, two different results. That is what here non-repeatable read. So, what is phantom read? So, according to the context of DBMS, we, uh, we used to interact with the database with the help of queries by using query languages. So, if I want to execute one query, I am getting the same query. If I, if I have been executed the same query, it is uh, representing or it is uh, what giving me different results for the same query. That is what we call as phantom read. So, phantom read occurs when two same queries are executed, but the rows retrieved by the two are different. That is what here phantom read. Next, what are the levels of isolation? So, here what is the level? There are four types of levels, right? Serializable, repeatable read, read uncommitted and read committed. These are the four important levels in isolation. Let us discuss about the each level briefly. So, what is serializable? Serializable means ability to serialize. We, we used to deal with the database both types of transactions, serial transactions and concurrent transactions. By dealing with concurrent transactions, which leads to database inconsistency, we used to make them serializable. We have the types also. We already discussed in our previous sessions. So, so this is the highest isolation level, which means that it, it, it is used to maintain the database in a perfect, consistent manner. Right. So, a serializable execution is guaranteed to be serializable and it is defined to be execution of operations in which concurrently executing transactions appears to be serially executing. By using conflict serializability and view serializability, we can make concurrent transactions into serializable, which leads the database in a consistent state. That is what about serializable. So, this is the highest isolation level. Okay, next what is repeatable read? This is the most restrictive isolation level. That means this allows transactions to be accessed after they have begun, even if they have not yet completed. 
that means it will allow the second transaction to read or write before the first transaction has been committed that is what we called as repeatable read so this level enables so this level which is used to lead to phantom reads so read uncommitted read uncommitted is the lowest isolation level so in this level one transaction may read not yet committed changes made by the other transaction thereby allowing dirty reads so that is what we called as read uncommitted state so what is the example for this one t1 t2 here r of a before committing this one t2 is trying to read the data item this is what we called as dirty read this is what we called as read uncommitted we are reading this uncommitted data that is what the intention next read committed what is read committed this isolation level guarantees that any data read is committed at the moment it is read that is what here t1 t2 let us take two transactions here r of a and after committing this one r of a w of a that means i am reading the data item on a and i am updating the data item and i am committing this one after committing only i used to read this data in from t2 so that is what we called as read committed reading the data item after committing only so which may leads the data in a consistent state so these are the four isolation levels what are those four serializable repeatable read read uncommitted and read committed so now let us deal with testing for serializability how we can able to test the serializability whether the given transaction is serializable or not in a diagrammatic representation okay so serialization graph is used to test the serializable of a schedule so what is that graph contains generally a graph contains set of vertices and edges right so if at all a tends to b that means what so first of all a whatever the transactions whatever the operations are doing or we are executing those are performed then only b must execute the transactions that is what the representation here so a derives a tends to b means what here first of all the transaction a whatever the operations in a those must be uh, those must be executed then only b will be executed so here that will be represented by using a graph that graph is called as precedence graph okay assume schedule s for s yes, we construct a graph known as precedence graph which contains vertices and edges okay so you let us consider two transactions here ti and tj ti and tj so what here ti tends to tj means whatever the operations that i am performing in ti later on then only tj must perform that is what the representation here if tj tends to ti means what that means first of all the transactions in tj has been completed then only i am going to execute ti that is what my representation okay so here which includes three conditions what are those three conditions here see creating a node ti tends to tj ti tends to g tj if ti executes write of a before tj executes read here ti executes ti will do write operation before tj performs read operation that is what one of the condition okay the second one is here we are discussing about the conflicts you may observe this one see this is write read conflict next read write conflict and next write write conflict here we are discussing about conflicts concept only okay so create a node ti tends to tj so we are creating ti tends to tj before see here ti executes read before tj executes write of q that means here tj ti executes read operation that means you are reading a before tj executes write up before write operation only ti must read the data item that is what here the second one what is the third one write write conflict so what is create a node ti tends to tj if ti execute write before tj is updating that data item 
So these are the three conditions that we used to know. So, in this way, the president graph will be represented. Ti tends to Tj. So, for representing here, we have three conditions. Read, write, write, read and write, write conflicts. Right. You can think here, why read, read conflict is not there? Why it is not a conflict? Here, we are not at all updating. Just we are reading the data item. We are not at all updating. That so it is not a conflict. Only whenever the right operation, only at least one right operation are there, then it can leads to what? Uh, data lost or lost update. Okay. If at all any one right operation exists. So, here if a president's graph contains a single edge Ti tends to Tj, then all the instructions are Ti executed before the first instruction of Tj. This means by seeing this president's graph, we can say that all the operations in Ti is executed first. Later on only Tj will be executed. Okay. So, if a president's graph of a schedule S contains a cycle, then it is non-serializable. So, if it contains a cycle, then it is what? Non-serializable schedule. If a president's graph has no cycle, then it is a serializable schedule. Why? Because after completion of the task Ti, then only Tj has been executing. It is nothing but serializable schedule only, right? So, if at all it is, uh, uh, it contains a cycle, then it becomes a uh, interleaved transactions, which is not a non-serial schedule. Next, implementing isolation typically involves concurrency control mechanisms. So, which will be dealt in our later on sessions. What we have discussed in this session? We have discussed about different types of uh, serializability. I mean, uh, how to represent the testing for serializability and levels of isolation. Thank you.